Hi, I'm Dr. Billy Retzlaff, and welcome back to ABA-ish. This is a channel that's dedicated to giving real-life supports to caregivers and educators that are likely to work because they're rooted in the science of behavior. If you enjoy these videos and want to see more of them, if they're helpful for you, please make sure to like the video or subscribe to the channel. Those are small steps you can take that are free, but definitely help me keep this going. All right, so today what we're gonna talk about is making praise valuable. So a lot of times if you watch any of my videos, you know I talk about how we can use our energy and our attention as a caregiver to encourage appropriate behavior in our kids. And the way that we do this is that we make sure that when our kids are doing the right thing, they're behaving appropriately, or they're doing something new that's challenging, we give them lots and lots of positive attention and praise. On the flip side, if they're doing something that's less than ideal, maybe it's a little frustrating or not something we want to see more of, our goal is to give them as little energy or attention for that behavior as possible. And when you do this consistently, what you'll see is your child usually will start to shift their behavior to those things that get big reactions from you, that get lots of attention and praise. So that can be a really great positive strategy to use. But what do you do if you have a kid for whom they don't really like your praise? They don't find it to be a positive. They may tell you they don't want your attention. They may say they don't care about your praise. Um, and how do you handle that? So the first thing I'll say is make sure you watch what happens with behavior. Sometimes kids will say like, I don't like that, but it actually, their behavior will change. So watch what's happening to behavior. But if you're trying to use your attention to shift behavior onto something more positive and it's just not working, these are a few things that we would need to think about and consider. So the first is to know and understand that praise is something that's known as a conditioned reinforcer. What this means is that there isn't something instinctual about praise that makes it rewarding to somebody. So if you think of something like food or sleeping, those are things that our body needs from a biological standpoint. And so a lot of times those things are reinforcing whether or not we have associations or history with them. Praise is a little bit different. The reason praise becomes rewarding to people is because it's associated with a whole bunch of other social things. When people praise me, I may get better um, forms of interaction from them. They may give me more access to tangible items. I may feel more safety and comfort in their presence. And so our praise isn't in its, of itself the reward. It's that our praise is associated with all these other things. And then over time, as our praise gets associated with lots and lots of different kinds of positives, it becomes that the praise itself is rewarding. So that's how it's conditioned to be a reinforcer or conditioned to be a reward. So when praise isn't acting as a positive the way we think it is, we need to ask ourselves why. Because most likely what this means is praise isn't a conditioned reinforcer for that individual. So the first question I always ask is, have we as the adult taken the time to pair ourselves with the in a positive way with the student or child? Are we doing things to make sure that they enjoy being around us? So if you have young kids where this is important, and actually it's true of even older kids too, it's important to make sure that you spend time with them where they are directing what's happening. So a lot of times when we play with kids, when we interact with kids as the adult, we're kind of dictating what is being done, how it's being done, and we're not really letting the kid take the lead. That can be have a really negative impact and make it where we're not paired as a positive. So if you are worried that you haven't strongly paired in a positive way with a student or a child that you care for, the first thing you want to do is spend a lot of time in a child-led situation. So find ways where the child can pick what activity you do together, how you do it together, what do you talk about while you're doing that activity. Of course, you need to keep it appropriate for the context you're in, but it's really important to find that time to pair with the individual individual so that your praise can have value. If you haven't become a positive person to that individual, then your praise doesn't mean as much because it's not associated with all those other good social things that we talked about. The next question I always ask is, are we giving praise that is genuine and believable? Sometimes um, individuals are a little bit more suspicious of praise. I actually kind of tend to be one of these people where if I get praise that's delivered in a way that feels really rote or robotic, if I hear a lot of people getting the exact same praise statement from somebody, then that starts to mean less to me because it doesn't feel genuine and believable. 
it's kind of crazy how kids can pick up on these things too. So it could be that if when you're delivering the praise, it doesn't feel genuine. You're saying it the same way every time. You're maybe not pointing out specifics, but just giving really vague praise like good job. Those are things that can all make your praise feel less genuine and believable to the individual. And so then it's less likely to function as a reinforcer. So make sure you're asking yourself, am I giving praise in a way that's genuine and believable to this individual? The next key of this is to, um, to make sure that we're showing ourselves as the adult to be a person who is consistent, predictable, and trustworthy. Your praise is going to mean more when you, somebody who the kid knows what to expect from. They know how you respond in both positive and negative ways, and they can trust that that's your genuine reaction. So by being consistent and predictable, you become a trustworthy person to them because they know exactly how you're going to respond in any given situation. They may not like your response every time, especially in a situation in which an inappropriate behavior has occurred, but there is safety and predictability, and that helps build that trust. When you've built that trust with an individual, then your praise becomes more meaningful to them. So have you kind of established yourself as that consistent, predictable person to them? Remember, a kid's behavior might be all over the place, but we have to be the consistent ones as the adult. Now, that being said, there are individuals who have difficulty accepting praise. This could be because of a history that they've had. Maybe they've dealt with a lot of unpredictable people in their life, depending on their history. They may have experienced certain kinds of trauma. It may also be related to a disability. Um, you know, an individual who maybe has oppositional defiance disorder may find praise accepting to be a little more difficult. Um, some researchers think this is rooted in self-esteem, and individuals with lower self-esteem may have a more difficult time accepting praise because they kind of hear it and they don't believe it because they don't believe it about themselves. So if you have somebody who you've paired with, you're being genuine and honest, and you're showing yourself as a predictable adult, and they're still really struggling when you deliver praise, what I recommend is that you switch from descriptive praise to descriptive noticing, and then you build from there. So what I mean by descriptive noticing is that you just describe exactly what you're seeing the same way you would in descriptive praise, but you stop at that point. So you might say something like, wow, Johnny, I saw that you got your homework started right away today. That's noticing, right? I'm noticing what happened. The difference would be in behavior-specific praise. I would say, wow, Johnny, I see that you got your, your homework started right away today. That's so responsible. I'm really proud of you. I add that extra part that has that praise piece to it when I'm doing descriptive praise. For descriptive noticing, it can be a little bit easier for individuals who struggle to accept praise to accept descriptive noticing because you can't really argue with it. There's no value statement attached to it. There's no inferences about what that means. I'm simply stating what I see. And so what I've noticed is when I've had students who really struggle with that descriptive praise, and it sometimes even has a negative effect where they start to respond poorly when I deliver that praise, I start out by making sure I've paired myself, being genuine and honest and consistent for them. But then I give just a lot of descriptive noticing, just saying what I see that's happening. And then very slowly, I will start to introduce praise statements a little bit along the way. And pretty soon we get to a point where I can praise them and they believe it's genuine and honest and it functions the way I want it to function, which is to increase whatever behavior I'm praising. I really encourage you not to give up and force it if an individual you're working with or a child you're caring for is having a hard time accepting your descriptive praise. It does take time and understanding. Especially depending on that individual's history, you might expect that their response is going to be very variable. So what I've seen sometimes is when I've worked through this with individuals and we've done the descriptive noticing and built those relationships and really focused on pairing, it starts to get better, it starts to get better, and then all of a sudden it's like they'll pull back away from you. And I think that's a safety response of those individuals. They start to get nervous that they're trusting somebody enough to accept that praise from them. So expect their behavior to be variable. But as the adult, you can remain consistent. You can keep doing your descriptive noticing. You can keep making sure you find time for positive activities that are child-led. You can be consistent in your responding and you can make sure that you're being genuine. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, again, please subscribe and share to support, and I will see you next time on ABA-ish.